It happened around 10 p.m., and my dad, aunt, younger cousins, and I were sitting on the patio. My brother, who is 11 years old, was trying to catch his little chickens to put in the cage underneath the house, and there were moments when he almost hurt his head, but he never did. My brother had a brain tumor when he was 12 months old, but now he is fine and recovered. My dad started screaming and shouting at him to get out of there because he was worried he would get hurt. My brother got annoyed at him and swore at him. That fueled my dad, and he grabbed the broom and lightly hit my brother's thigh. My brother then went upstairs to my sister crying, sobbing, and having a panic attack. My sister came down furiously, and keep in mind for the past four days, my dad has been shouting at us for anything. My sister told my dad that he made my brother cry, and she literally flew upstairs. I saw that she had cornered my brother in the room, and my sister was in front trying to protect him. My dad was shouting so much and so aggressively that I genuinely thought at any moment he would unalive my brother. I lost it and screamed, don't you dare touch him. That's when he charged at me and I ran outside into the garden. I stopped because I didn't think he would hurt me in public, in front of family members on a busy road with neighbors nearby. I saw my mom grabbing his face, trying to stop him, but she shouldn't have. Then he pushed my face onto the cement grabbed my hair, and tried to punch my face. But I thankfully let him miss and protected my face. He then started to drag me by my hair across the garden to inside. My aunt and mum tried to get him to let go, but he wouldn't. When I saw I was near the door, I screamed for help and called for the police. That's when he stopped, got his car keys, and left because he was worried the neighbors would call them. I was left on the floor, and I touched my head because it was so painful and I lost a ball-sized amount of hair. My sister threw a good hard punch at him before he left, but he knocked her down. This happened three days ago, and the next day, I had a mental breakdown. Nothing like ever before. I was throwing myself at the wall, trying to hurt myself, saying I wanted to end my life, that I had nothing to live for. I was screaming and shouting, and it didn't even sound like my voice. I was taken to a psychiatric hospital and given medication. I didn't tell them about my dad because he would have been arrested. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time. Back in September of last year, my dad lost it because he found a plate in my sister's room and got angry about it. I protected my sister and he punched my door leaving a hole. Now he's crying like a baby and asking me to forgive him. I don't know what to do. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you most likely have a severe concussion and need to go to a neurologist or emergency medicine doctor. Tell them everything. It starts a paper trail. You won't be the last family member he physically hurts until your mom leaves him. If she refuses to leave him, make sure to tell her you won't show up to her funeral after he unalives her, but you will make sure if he lays hands on your siblings, the whole world will know that her cowardice is the reason they are in the hospital or dead. Comment two. Wow, if I were you, I would stop reading any posts here and call the police and the Department of Child and Family Services. This is not good. And if he escalated this quickly regarding something fairly benign, I worry about what he would do on something a little more serious. Remember that not only is this about the way he treated you, but the actions he took on your brother and sister as well. Now for the update. Two days after everything that happened, I got home from the psych hospital. To say I was a little uneasy would be an understatement. My brother was still staying with a family friend, which was probably for the best, honestly. The house just felt empty without his energy bouncing all over the place. I mean, the kid is like a total whirlwind sometimes, but I missed it. Weird, right? My dad was there and he was actually trying to be all nice. He wanted to talk about how I was feeling and everything. I kept my answers short and simple. I wasn't about to get into any deep conversations about the stuff that had gone down. He mentioned he had spoken to a family therapist about what happened. Like that was supposed to make everything better again. Yeah, okay, buddy. My mom was also there and seemed really worried about both me and my brother. But honestly, she looked pretty worn out herself. We all agreed to have a small dinner that night to ease back into some sort of normalcy. My dad made his favorite dish 
beef stew, and you could tell he was really trying to bring the family together over this. He even prepped it all by himself, which was a big deal because he usually never lets anyone else in the kitchen. Just as we were sitting down to eat, my brother came home. He looked nervous and kinda uneasy. I could tell he was a little freaked out by everything. He sat right next to me, and I noticed he was fidgeting with his hands like he was trying to get rid of some of that restless energy. My dad tried to lighten the mood with some jokes, which was his way of trying to be the funny, loving dad, but it just wasn't working. The atmosphere was still heavy, you know? Out of nowhere, my brother looked at my dad and asked him why he had hit him. I felt the air get sucked out of the room. My dad's face just fell, and he started stammering through some half-hearted apology, claiming it was a mistake. I couldn't stay quiet any longer. I jumped in and told my brother it wasn't the first time our dad had lost control. Some tears started filling my brother's eyes, and he looked at me like he was asking for support. It was heartbreaking, honestly. My mom could see how upset we were, and she suggested we all take a family walk to talk things out. I think she just wanted to get us out of the house and away from the kitchen because it felt like things were about to blow up in there. During the walk, my dad kept trying to explain himself, but let's be real, there was no explaining away what he did. My brother suddenly yelled that he felt unsafe and didn't want to live there anymore. That hit hard. My dad got all defensive, insisting he was trying to change and do better. I could see my mom glancing at him nervously, like she didn't know how to step in without making it worse. Then my brother suggested moving in with our grandparents, and honestly, that shocked everyone, including me. My dad shot that idea down immediately and promised to work on his anger issues, whatever that even means. The next day, I overheard my mom and dad arguing in the kitchen. My mom was accusing him of not taking responsibility for his actions, which is an understatement if I ever heard one. The argument escalated, and she mentioned separating for a while. I was in my room, and I just froze when I heard that. My dad dismissed the idea right away, insisting he was changing for the family. That evening, I got a text from my aunt inviting me over for dinner, and I was so ready to get out of that house. I felt like I was walking on eggshells all the time. I accepted the invitation, hoping to escape the unresolved issues at home for at least a little while. When I got to my aunt's house, she greeted me with a hug, and I could tell she was relieved to see me. We sat down for dinner, and I started to relax a little. Then during dinner, I found out that my dad had reached out to a bunch of family members after everything went down. My aunt told me about the conversations he'd been having, and it made me feel a bit uneasy. The conversation took a turn when my aunt mentioned some of my dad's past behavior at family gatherings. I knew what she was talking about, and it made me feel all kinds of messed up inside. We talked more about it, and I just felt a mix of confusion and worry. I got home late that night, and guess who was waiting up for me? Yeah, my dad. He looked anxious and asked if I had a good time at my aunt's. I felt too drained to even respond. I just wanted to crawl into bed and forget about everything. So, that's where I'm at. I feel like I'm stuck in this weird limbo, and I have no idea what's going to happen next. Mini update, I am back after the weekend. My brother is staying with our aunt and uncle for the time being. My dad is trying to act like things are normal, but it's so tense. I can feel the sadness all around the house. My mom is on edge, and I'm constantly worried about her. I have a family therapy session scheduled with my mom and dad, but I'm not sure how it's going to go. I'm just trying to get through each day and hoping things get better somehow. Am I the idiot for rescuing my brother's wife from his violent outbursts and ignoring my parents' denial? Am I the idiot for confronting my brother after he held a knife to his wife's throat? I have found myself in a complex, difficult family situation, and I am hoping to activate the Reddit hive mind to give me some unbiased advice here. For some context and backstory, I was foster adopted into a family of other foster adopted children, all from varying backgrounds of abuse and neglect. All of those foster kids are my brothers and sisters, period. I love them like they were my own blood, but our family is far from perfect. The struggle right now is with my closest brother, let's call him Barry. 
Barry and I are close in age and formed a deep bond as kids. Growing up, I always felt like he had so much potential as a man. He was sweet, generous, and very protective of his loved ones. Barry comes from a background of abuse, like many of us siblings. Growing up, his greatest fear was to become like his abusers. And as a young teen, he took a hard stand against anything, drugs, alcohol, etc., that could potentially send him down that path. He, of course, aged, loosened his convictions, and ended up doing what most young adults do, drink, smoke, party, etc. None of it was overly concerning, other than him changing his views on what could turn him into his past. Now let's fast forward a few years. Barry goes through a string of girlfriends, all ending on bad terms. The common theme was the girls being scared of my brother, and in one instance, a mark was left on his record. A couple of years ago, Barry reconnected with a serious high school flame, and within a few months they were engaged and then married. His wife, let's call her Amy, is wonderful, kind, loyal, intelligent, beautiful, the works. Everything seemed fine until one day, Amy started texting me asking for advice on my brother. Amy made it very clear that Barry cannot know she's texting me, and has begged that I don't share with him that we are talking. Over time, these messages have gotten more and more alarming. A lot has happened, but the key points are, he's isolated her from her family, making her choose between them and him. Her family did not approve of the marriage. She chose him and barely speaks to her family anymore. They can't have any kind of normal marital disagreements without it ending in him getting blackout angry, which has led to him throwing things at her, calling her names, and breaking furniture. He has not outright hit her yet, but the things he has thrown have hit her. I have advised them, her, him, and them together to seek therapy. Barry actively refuses to participate due to negative therapy experiences as a young foster child. In all of our conversations, one thing is very clear. Amy loves my brother. Her main concern through all of this is his feelings. She understands deeply that her husband has deep-rooted trauma, doesn't want to cause him further pain, and wants to help him but can't continue to live like this. Now for an update. Tonight, Amy disclosed that during an argument, he held up a knife to her. At this point, I am so angry, ashamed, and disgusted that I can't think clearly. My brother is an aggressor, hands down. But he's my brother, and I am absolutely heartbroken that this broken boy I grew up with has become this. I want so badly to help him, but even more so, I want to help Amy. No woman or man should be subjected to this type of abuse, and I am scared that something bad will happen if I don't take action. So here are my Reddit-focused questions. 1. How do I take action and get her out of this situation? 2. How do I help my brother? I want him to get help so badly. 3. How do I help her and not completely blow up my relationship with my brother and family? Keeping her safe is the number one priority for me, but I'm afraid of losing my entire family over this. I feel so helpless here. I love my brother and want to get him the help he needs, but I cannot and will not stand by and be a bystander to abuse. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Your priority right now is to protect his wife. Your brother is an aggressor. A short engagement is a classic tactic. Many women stay with abusers way too long because they see the good. Abusers vacillate between being good and their hurtful behavior to keep their victims thinking this. Therapy will not help. Your brother needs a program for hurtful men. He will never improve unless he genuinely acknowledges that he is an aggressor. There is so much more. I encourage this book for you and your sister-in-law. This is a free link. Comment to. First things first, you reach out to her family. Secondly, you contact the authorities anonymously. Make it seem like a neighbor has contacted them due to the yelling and they are arranging a welfare check. You need to provide her an exit whether it be a group of you showing up with the police to help her take her belongings and leave. But the real issue is Amy. She is so focused on him that he will likely harm her because she won't leave. She thinks she can fix him. Now for the update. Here's the update. A few days after my last post, I got a late night call from Amy. She was freaking out and told me that Barry was drinking a lot and acting even crazier than usual. I rushed over to their apartment panicking the whole way there. The last thing I needed was to find Amy hurt or worse. When I got there, I saw the front door was open and heard shouting from inside. 
It was one of those times when you know you're walking into something risky, but you just have to do it. I walked in, and there was Barry, throwing furniture around like a kid having a meltdown. Amy was huddled in the corner, shaking and begging him to chill out. Honestly, my heart just broke seeing her like that. I stepped in to talk to Barry, and he turned on me, being all aggressive and confrontational. He started accusing me of butting in and not getting what he was going through. Like, seriously? I wasn't the one throwing chairs. I tried to get his attention, telling him to put down the broken chair he was holding. But then he just lost it and threw the chair across the room, barely missing me. At that point, I knew I had to get Amy out of there. I managed to get her out, and we drove to a nearby diner to talk. She shared her fears about how Barry's behavior was getting worse, and I suggested she should stay with me for a bit. She hesitated, though. We talked about Barry's childhood trauma and how it might affect him now. While we were talking, I noticed someone watching us from a nearby booth. It turned out to be a friend of Barry's, who came over and made a rude comment about Amy. I just lost it and stood up to him, insisting that she deserved better. He shrugged it off and left, but Amy was even more stressed out after that. The next day, I invited my parents over for a family dinner, hoping to talk about Barry's behavior. During dinner, we talked about Barry and I shared Amy's concerns. They seemed shocked, but also unsure to believe it. After dinner, I found a text from Amy saying she was thinking about not staying with me. I called her, and she sounded distant and distracted. Then, the next morning, I got a text from her saying she was moving back in with Barry. I was determined to stop her from making this choice, so I drove to her apartment. The door was locked, and no one answered when I knocked. I called Barry, hoping to talk to him, and he answered, sounding all calm but dismissive, saying Amy was fine and didn't need help. I insisted on talking to her, but he refused. I was freaking out, so I called a family member who lived nearby for support. They came over, and we had to break down the door, fearing the worst. When we got inside, Amy was gone, leaving a note saying she needed space. I was just crushed. Later that week, Barry showed up at my house looking all messy and desperate. He begged me to help him find Amy, claiming he didn't mean to scare her. I was hesitant, but agreed to help him look for her keeping my distance the whole time. The search led us to a bar where we found Amy, sitting with a group of strangers. When Barry showed up, there was a confrontation and Amy looked terrified. I stepped between them and that's where I'm at now. I just know it's far from over. I realized I hadn't mentioned that Amy called me using a friend's phone. Barry had taken her phone during the fight and locked her out of the apartment. When I called Barry after the incident, I used a different number to avoid him blocking my calls. Amy's friend is now helping her. Am I the idiot for refusing to spend my Sundays with my fiance and then planning a trip without her? Am I the idiot for telling my partner you made your choices and planning a trip without them? We've been together for three years now. I have always told her that on Friday and Saturday, we can do whatever she wants. She just needs to ask. But on Sunday, I like to relax at home. This is because this is the only day of the week I can just lay on my couch, watch my series, or play video games. It's the only me day I have. Last night, we were having dinner with her friends, and one of them had the wonderful idea to suggest we should go and grab breakfast today at 7 a.m. just to annoy me, knowing very well I don't like to do it. His girlfriend agreed, and my fiance suddenly wanted to go as well. I said no multiple times, but she kept saying yes, yes, and yes without asking what I wanted. She did not ask if I had the money to go, if I had something planned for today, or if I felt like going. I had a pretty rough week, and she knew it. Nothing. So I wanted to keep the peace and finally agreed to it. But it was obvious I was not pleased with how things turned out. Everyone knew it. So I tried to calm down. After all, I'm doing this for her happiness. I calmed down and asked where we were going to go. She did not say anything. I asked her this morning, and she said she was going alone, and she is obviously upset. I don't feel like I have done something wrong. I was not going to give away my only relaxation day just because someone wanted to pressure me into going with them. I was never asked for my opinion by my fiancé, and she assumed I should have just agreed with it. I even gave in in the end, 
and I just got a big fat thank you. Maybe I'm wrong. She doesn't want to talk, and I don't know how to talk things out. It's pretty confusing. When I do something wrong, I usually apologize. But in this case, I don't feel like I've done something wrong. Please give me some advice. Now for an update. So, yeah, she finally talked to me on Monday. According to her, she was mad due to how I reacted in front of everyone, and also because she wanted me to go to her house and pick her up to go to the restaurant even when she said she didn't want me to go anymore. According to her, that would have shown that I actually care. However, I didn't want to pick her up if she told me she didn't want me there because, well, I don't want to be somewhere I'm not welcome. She told me she is really mad and embarrassed as she had to go alone, but I offered to go, and I genuinely wanted to be by her side, but I can't go against her expressed wishes. She told me she is going to be mad for many days, and now she's suddenly very loving and caring, and the next second, she acts like I'm a stranger. She doesn't even like anymore. I don't really know what to do anymore. I could purchase a gift, even though I have already apologized for what I actually did, but I didn't apologize for what she assumed I should have done, and I said we need to work on our communication. She didn't take that very well. I never yelled or tried to be confrontational, and I don't really know what I should do. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. You don't need to do everything together all the time. My wife and I very specifically tell each other when we need alone time. You get one day off a week and your fiance wants you to wake up for a 7 a.m. breakfast with her friends. She can go and have a great time by herself. I'd personally get a new partner before I got up at 7 on a Sunday for any reason that wasn't critically important. Does she have a pattern of trampling over what you want to do regularly? The fact that she's mad at you for begrudgingly agreeing to do the thing she wants is not great. That's some serious codependent behavior right there. She needs to have her own independence, just like you want to have yours. Comment 2. So I wanted to keep the peace and finally agreed to it but it was obvious I was not pleased with how things turned out. Everyone knew it. So I tried to calm down. After all, I'm doing this for her happiness. I calmed down and asked where we were going to go. She did not say anything. What does I tried to calm down, I calmed down mean? What did you do that wasn't calm? Now for the update. About three weeks after my last update, I got a text from my fiance asking to meet up and talk. I wasn't excited, but I figured we had to sort things out eventually. We met at a diner where we used to go on dates, hoping to clear the air a little, or at least eat some fries together and avoid the awkwardness for a bit. She brought up the breakfast situation again, saying her friends had opinions on our relationship. I was just like, here we go again. I asked her if her friends influenced her decisions, which made her super defensive. She said she felt pressured to please her friends over me and didn't like being called out. So yeah, we argued about communication. I was trying to explain my side of things and she was insisting that I should have just gone along with her plans. Like really? Just because her friends wanted breakfast at some crazy hour? The conversation got heated and she suggested that we take a break to think things over. I don't know if a break would help, but I was tired of arguing, so I reluctantly agreed. A week later, I went to a birthday party for a mutual friend, trying to distract myself. I was just there to eat cake and forget about life for a bit, but then my fiancé showed up at the party, clearly having fun and mingling with everyone. I noticed she was laughing and being all friendly with this guy I didn't recognize. It felt like a punch in the gut. Later, I overheard her talking to her friends about how she felt free during the break. That was a whole other level of hurt. I approached her and she introduced me to the guy, saying he was just a friend. Yeah, right. After the party, I went home and decided I needed to focus on myself for a bit. I started hitting the gym more and just trying to clear my head. A few days later, my sister called and mentioned she saw my fiancé with the same guy at a coffee shop. She casually mentioned they seemed very close, which sparked my concern to say the least. I decided to check social media for any updates and saw pictures from the coffee shop. My fiancé posted a photo with the guy, captioning it, Great conversations with amazing friends. I was just like, what the heck? 
Later that week, I invited her to a family dinner at my parents' house for Thanksgiving. During dinner, I noticed she was texting throughout the meal, which definitely caught my attention. My mom asked if we were still on a break, and my fiancé casually replied, just figuring things out. I wanted to scream at her for that, but I just held it in. After dinner, I confronted her about the texts and if they were with the guy. She brushed off my concerns, claiming I was being paranoid and insecure. I'm not insecure, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. A few days later, I found out through a family group chat that my fiancé was planning a trip with friends. She didn't mention the trip to me, even though it was planned for the same weekend as my birthday. I was just like, wow, way to prioritize your friends over your fiancé. So I decided to plan a surprise trip with my friends, keeping it under wraps. I needed to get away from all this drama. The day before my birthday, I posted on social media about my plans, tagging my friends. My fiance saw the post and called me, sounding upset that I didn't include her. I told her she made her choices and I wanted a weekend away to enjoy with my friends. Honestly, I didn't want to deal with her drama on my birthday. The trip with my friends turned out to be a great time. We did all the things I love and it felt good to just let loose and forget about everything for a bit. Upon returning, I found her waiting at my place, clearly wanting to talk. She tried to apologize, but I interrupted her, saying I was done with the back and forth. I was so over the emotional ups and downs. The conversation ended with her storming out. I don't know what her deal is, but I'm done dealing with this. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.